Sin City. Saturday night, fight night. Any given weekend, this place is the entertainment capital of the world. When combat sports shines brightest on the Las Vegas Strip. Boxing and mixed martial arts need some new voices. And franchise sports media got them for you. Join Kalani Lua and Griffin Kemp each week as they bring you news and hot takes from inside the octagon and the ring. Get your popcorn ready. It's showtime. FSM's main event starts right now. What's going on, Fight Fans? Thank you guys for tuning in to another edition of the main event right here on Franchise Sports Media. I'm Kleine Lua. I'm Griffin Camp. Griff, we had this discussion before. Yeah. Did you tell me you don't think Westerns are a good movie topic? No, I didn't say that. I said A Western... good movie genre? No, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Can I say what I said? Just I said Westerns said. are a weak genre. It's an outdated genre. When's the last time you saw anywhere that needed a Western movie? The Heart of They Fall a, that just came out on Netflix last year? It was a good movie. It, it was, was good. a good one. It's good, but what, what else? But as far as, hold on, as far as recent ones? I'm talking or are you just about talking about in general? West, let's say recent. Let's say recent. Well, hold on. You also got to, like you said, it's outdated. Yes. There was a period where they made so many Westerns in a row, so they slowed like down on it. But hold on. These? Tombstone, which came out in a, Tombstone, timeless classic right there. That's the Quick and the Dead. Classic. Timeless. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. All the Clint Eastwood films, the man with no name. Oh, Clint Eastwood, I don't know. Who you didn't even know who that was. Clint you didn't even Eastwood? know who that was. You like, who's that right there? Who's that? Clifford? Well, you they don't like Clint Eastwood. My name because they are just not relevant no more. You can't make a Western Unforgivable? today. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Yeah. You really gonna throw that one out here and actually think that's gonna do anything? Clint no. Eastwood, Gene Hackman, Morgan Freeman, all those this guys, the legends, the goats. This ain't the fifties through the seventies. That anymore. didn't come out in the fifties or the sixties. Nobody. It doesn't attract anymore. It doesn't bring in people. I just first off, Unforgiven won several awards when it came out in the 90s, The Quick and the Dead. Tombstone 90s. won plenty of awards. The Heart of They Fall just came out on Netflix. Well, as I mentioned, they did come out. There was a spaghetti western time where they came out with a bunch of films. Yeah. Just like, guess what? They came out with a bunch of war films, then they kind of died down, then they came back up. Movie genres go up and down. Horror films, they used to be the horror biggest films. talk of the fin- uh, talk of the town. Oh. And then guess what? They went away oh. for a little while, a and now they've come back. There's a whole month in the year dedicated to horror films. All right? No, but the they're all the films older will films. Always will be they're all time. the older films. They're all the older films because did it's you, Halloween. Did you see Smile? Did you see Smile that came out this last year? Let me get this right. It's one of these you, scariest movies. Go see Smile. It's on what Paramount Plus. Go watch it. You 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 thought The Lion King was a scary movie at times when they showed uh, Scar. Who, whose heart wasn't bumping when that stampede was coming down the hill. Exactly. I was. But I that, was frightened. Yeah, but it was. Well, first off, you as a big as you are saying you was frightened, that is one thing. <laughs> Second off, let me get this right. Let me get this right. Yeah. You don't see Die Hard. You don't think Westerns are a decent enough uh, category for you to watch any of the films, but you're going to sit there and say, smile. Just the title itself. Smile. That was so That is good. up there with horror that films? That was so good. All The, the way they uh, promoted that film with people going to actual baseball games and sitting there and smiling. The that was pretty was crazy. And so then you go and see the movie, and it holds up. It was worth no, it. it, it I, I, spent, I spent about $20 to get me, my girlfriend, my mother, and my sister. We all watched that together. We all cried together. We all felt fear together. I loved it. Hold on, hold on. The biggest crime here, if we're being honest, the biggest crime. What the hell is movie theater did you go to where you spent $20 for four people? Mm. Rainbow. Nah, Rainbow, nah, baby. nah, nah, brother. Rainbow, that's you, a that's the bootleg you got right nah. there. Y'all sat in the living room yeah. watching on streaming when somebody gets up in the middle of it and starts moving around. Hey, the $20? Hey, you Rainbow. don't even get a popcorn and a soda with that. Oh, no, not so. You go to Rainbow, they don't monitor the, the slushy things. You just oh. buy a large drink, get a nice little slushy. It's such a good time. You know what we do have to monitor? What's up? This week. Mm-hmm. Across the sand. Literally a week from today. Yeah, a week from today in Abu Dhabi. So, excuse me, in Saudi Arabia. Excuse mm-hmm. me. <laughs> we do have, finally, and we'll see once the bell rings. I, I'll, I'll wait to see. Tommy Fury, not Tyson Fury, the heavyweight champion, the Gypsy King. His younger brother, Tommy Fury, stepping in against Jake Paul. The problem child, Jake Paul, taking on TNT Tommy Fury. Mm. They've tried to set up their fights three, four different times in the past. There's been visa issues, injury issues. Fury's been pulling out. This one, 
Last time around, brother, main event, Paul Fury. What are your initial thoughts on it before we dive into uh, breaking it down? What are your initial thoughts on hearing, hey, we're finally going to get Paul Fury? I mean, it's, I mean, this is, uh, they're going into a boxing bat. And it's just fitting that this, we still, a week, we're only a week away from this fight, and we still can't be uh, confident that it's gonna happen. I definitely it's, can't. Be. It's fitting, and it's not just that it's Tommy Fury and Jake Paul, it's the fact that it involves boxing too. It's just, it's just, it just fits. But I, initial thoughts, I'm more excited, I'm excited to see what happens in the fight, but more than that, I'm excited to see what happens after the fight. Where, win or lose for both guys, I don't really care what happens with Tommy Fury's career. I'm sorry, I just don't. Jake Paul, what happens with Jake Paul after this fight? Where does he go? Because he got, he finally did it. He knocked down that one pinnacle that he was waiting to do, which was actually box and a legitimate boxer and a legitimate boxer with a legitimate name. So now that he does that, where do you go from here? Do you go back into the batch of uh, old retired UFC fighters and try to keep doing that? Do you go and you start actually maybe getting a ranking? I, heard, I saw somewhere that the ranking uh, WBC might actually give Paul a ranking if he beats Fury. That's interesting. But then what? Then you go and fight some boxers that aren't the pinnacle of the sport. It's more like they're kind of mid-level guys. I mean, it's just, it's interesting to see where he'll go. But we all know too, Nate Diaz is right there. Nate Diaz is still a card he wants to play. It is a card that he still wants to play, and I'm pretty sure at some point, probably later this year, he'll play it. I hope so. Jay Paul and Fury. You know, Fury's want, trying to come up, trying to live up to his big brother's name. It's very hard. Only, look, as great as Tyson Fury is, let's be honest. If Tyson Fury had four losses and was a decent heavyweight, but, you know, had some struggles, the pressure wouldn't be so much on, on Tommy. But your brother's undefeated. He's defeated Deontay Wilder. Mm -hmm. He's going out there and won the title. He stopped the Klitschko brother uh, during his 25-year reign. So it's one of those where you're like, wait a minute. I have a lot to live up to here. So it's a bit unfair for some of the pressure he's under. Again, he's eight, Tommy Fury's 8-0 in his career. Mm -hmm. There's not many boxers you can name who were 8-0 during their time and who they were fighting. Devin Haney right now, one of the best in the world. Who was he fighting when he was 7-8, 9-0? Nobody, but that's because he didn't have a bigger brother who was a champion. So that's why I say some of the criticism and some of the expectations we put on Tommy Fury, it's a bit unfair. It's not like Nick and Nate Diaz where Nate had a chance to go through the Ultimate Fighter, come up through the UFC rankings to finally prove that, yeah, I am legit to be at the top of this game like my brother Nick. Tommy's just like, hey, brother, you the Gypsy King's little brother. You better go in there and do with him. With Jake Paul, he's done a phenomenal job in marketing himself. Yes, he's taking on a box. I mean, a, a, a NBA player. Player, knocked him out. He's taking on former UFC champions. Knocked them out. Mm. He went one with Anderson Silva, a legit middleweight. And we're like, okay, somebody who's his size, he's had some boxing matches. Granted, he's been up there a bit long in the tooth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. But he went in there and held his own. To where, as you said, now that he's starting to get some credible respect, saying, hey, listen, we're not saying he's going to be up there with Canelo and we're uh, 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 Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins, but you do have to give him the fact that he is fighting guys who he can fight within his realm of skill set, and he is willing to take on tougher and tougher challenges each and every time out there. Ben Askren, okay, wrestler, pure wrestler. Pure wrestler. Tyrone Woodley, a blown up welterweight, one hit, uh, one punch wonder with the right hand, a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Anderson Silva, wait a minute, striker, one of the best middleweights of all time, Mm -hmm. possibly the greatest of all time. Now he's taking on a legit boxer who's a known four KOs. Paul, look, say what you will, Jake Paul is willing to challenge himself and say, I'll take on a tough fight. I'm very excited if this fight goes down simply because he's doing what he said he wanted to do. I'm taking on the next big challenge. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, like, it's like you said, the criticism that Fury gets, I don't think it's just the fact that he's maybe not getting, like, he's leveling up to his last name and his brother's legacy. It's also, he gets this criticism is well-deserved because of just this whole mess this entire time his involvement with Jake Paul. I mean, it's, you've got the press conference where he didn't even bother to show up. Tyson Fury and the father showed up and Jake Paul was having a word off with uh, the dad and Tommy didn't seem like he wanted to be involved. Then he had all these pullouts and then it just seems like he's he's almost frightened, like he's running away from this. And it's just so much has gone on during this time that was on Fury's part that that's where a lot of this criticism is coming from and it's well-deserved. I mean, 
you can't do this. This isn't the way business is done in the game. And Jake Paul has said it many times. He's like, I will do whatever it takes to get this fight going. I will not get paid. You can have all the purse. You can, we, we'll go to the UK. We'll do everything for you just so you will go in there and get in the ring with me. Do you really think he don't fight for free? Hey, you man, really he, think any of these guys are going to say, I'll fight this man in a phone booth in the middle of Times Square for free? They all say I, that. Nobody ever fights for free. Guy, Nobody ever means it. That That's all hype for the thing. And, and granted, give him credit for that. But that's all hype for the shit. That's all hype for yeah, the fight. He doesn't. He's not really about to fight nobody for free. Hey, what did the Joker say? Do you know who the Joker is, by the way? It's a Batman character. Look the, it up. Oh, the one who's been made 8,000 times? Yeah, oh, yeah I'm aware. And, and he's only been made 8,000 great times, by the way. Ooh, well, I don't know about that. Jared Little. Mm. Jared Little actually was pretty good. If you see the deleted scenes, not his father director got rid of those scenes. Nonetheless. Oh, so you just going to overlook Keith Ledger, Jack Nicholson? No, no, no. Just gonna, oh, okay, then. Thank you. Sure. But just like the Joker said, if you get at something, never do it for free. Jake Paul is trying to hype it up. And for Tommy Fury, okay, look, we know there's a lot of shadiness that sometimes goes on in boxing. Yeah. And we know that sometimes with the contract negotiations. And then here's another thing. Think of this pressure. If you're Tommy Fury, who's supposed to be a legit boxer, mm -hmm. right? You take on this YouTuber and lose, that's your career. You'll be eight and one, you'll never get another legit fight again. He'll have to go on a legit 25 win streak just to get another decent fight ever again. So for him, it's like, dude, I have everything to lose. If I beat Jake Paul, you beat up a Jake YouTuber Paul who knows. Jake have anything to lose? Not necessarily, Jay no. Paul, do you understand the way this man's career in boxing has been built up? He can't afford to lose. Yes, he can. No, he cannot. If he he's a YouTuber who can, if who can afford to, to lose. Not if he's trying to gain his, uh, get down and do great things in boxing. Jake Paul said he wants to get into the world of boxing. He wants to fight real legitimate. He's yeah. talking about fighting Canelo. That does, it's already a far-fetched idea. Yeah, far-fetched. It it's out the door if you lose to an Askren, a Tyron Woodley. He didn't I lose to those guys, though. But if you lose to a, if you, lose to a if Tommy you fight Fury. your first boxer, this is his first real boxer and that he's fighting. Nice. Yes. All Anderson Silva has some boxing matches. MMA legend. Yeah. All those other guys with MMA fighters. This is his first boxing match. Let's be honest. Even though he's six and zero with four knockouts, and even though Jake Paul's looked great in some of his fights. He ain't necessarily put together a full uh, fight where you said, damn, that kid is good. He's powerful. He's athletic. And he's got a nice right hand. But there's times when you look at it and you're just like, oh, this dude's cardio is whack. Mm -hmm. Anderson Silva at one point in their fight, I forget what round it was. I want to say maybe the fifth round. Anderson was literally just bobbing and weaving, docking mm -hmm. all the punches. Yeah, and, yeah. and Paul missed like eight straight jabs. Right. Bro, all I'm saying is he's got the name value. It will not hurt Paul as much as Fury because this is what Fury does for an absolute living. Yeah. This is, okay, just stick with me on this path here. Okay. Just like your boy. Your boy has lost a couple times. He's still big time. When you reach a certain level of celebrityism and your name is out there, mm -hmm. Jay Paul's next fight, we'll be we'll know about it. We may not know Tommy Fury's next fight if he loses. Guaranteed. We may not know when, when, it, when it happens if he fights again. But if Jay Paul loses, Whoever he fights next, because you know he's not going to fight another no-name boxer. It'll be somebody named Diaz or God somebody like a, the son of a boxer who's on the, on the come up, something like that. We'll hear about that fight. We won't hear about Tommy Fury if he was to lose. That's why it's more pressure on him as opposed to Jake Paul. It's pressure whenever you step in the cage of yeah, the ring. Of course. But it's more pressure on the loss for Tommy Fury. His career will be trash. Well, you're done. You're talking about delete. Pressure. Delete. Completely It'll gone. be like Men in Black, if you even know that movie. Look into this, look into this button here. Doom. You'll be done. You, we won't even know what Tommy Fury was. Yes, yes, you're you're right. There is that that factor in it. Ties, Tommy Fury, his career could be over after this. But Jake Paul's is almost certainly over after this. That is the whole draw of Paul in these boxing matches. Is that people keep saying you're a YouTuber. You should not. You cannot go into the ring with real fighters. You don't belong here. You don't belong in this world. That is what they're all clamoring for. And that's why people pay so much money to watch him fight. They want to see him lose and he keeps winning and he keeps proving wrong. And there's more, the more he wins each fight, the higher he's gonna go, the closer he gets to maybe down the road, no, no time soon, but maybe down the road, he'll be walking into that ring with one Canelo, nah, right? That's nah. his ultimate goal. He wants to get in this. He's dead serious. He's dead set. If he loses right now to Tommy Fury, ooh, that's gonna look bad. Ugh, not, not good. Here's the thing, there's two movies. I don't know if you've seen them, knowing your movie history. <laughs> Rocky and Creed. Mm -hmm. Okay? The first movie of both, they lose. Yeah. 
but in the manner in which they lost, going the distance with the champion, proving your medal, showing that you belong. In the first Creed, the champion even comes up to him and says, hey, you belong here. You earned it. You go out there and you represent that name well. In the first one, you know, Apollo's like, oh, you got you got lucky. Then in the sequel, they go at it. But if Jake Paul was to lose, but put on a good showing and show that, okay, if he lost by decision, yeah, he would. Because as I pointed out, your boy McGregor is lost. Has he lost any of his star power? That's the UFC. No. That's MMA. This is boxing. No, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Okay, Mike Tyson also lost at times. Did he lose any of his star power? When he fought Lennox Lewis, he was still one of the biggest names in boxing. He had lost twice to Holyfield, lost to Buster Douglas. What happened to him? Sugar Ray Leonard, he lost a couple times. He wasn't any less of a draw. I see De La Hoya lost several times, but the last time he fought Manny Pacquiao, still was a big fight. Manny, are you okay? Are you okay, Manny? He gets knocked out. Still a big draw when he fights later on. You can lose in boxing if one, you lose to another top tier fighter or two in this particular case if you went out and put on an excellent showing i'm not saying that if he gets storched in 30 seconds bam bam thank you ma'am that he's out if he if manny pack manny pack out knocked out Ricky in two rounds and it did not take that long trust me i watched it if fury did that to paul I'm, then yeah you're done but if it's, let's say, a decision victory and it's a split one and it looked like, hey man, Paul looked pretty good in this one, I guarantee you Paul's going to gain more respect because he just showed while I didn't beat a boxer, I could hang with some of these boxers. Jake Paul is somebody who has spat on the feet of ones of like Dana White, the whole heads of boxing, all right? And you think you think that when he loses, all of a sudden the boxing world's going to be like, okay, we'll make the exception for you because you are somebody who's been talking nonstop mess about big name guys like Dana White and boxing and itself. Money. money, money, yes. He brings but in money. Will they bring in money when they realize if you lose the type, if you lose to Tommy Fury in the as, competitive, as Jay Paul, in the competitive then that's your then that's your ceiling. Your ceiling is Tommy Fury. That's only your seventh pro fight. He wants Again. to go to Canelo. He wants that yeah, level. Yeah, but see, look, here, 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 okay, because you're starting to annoy me with this one. You keep pointing out Canelo and what he wants. You do know he's got like five other fighters on that list other than Canelo, but you don't want to mention any of those that's guys. That's the biggest boxing name he's been mentioning. That's the biggest boxing name only because, guess what? Some of the other guys aren't available. Right now, we got Roy Jones Jr. getting ready to take on Anthony Pettis yeah. on April 1st. I still think it's an April Fool's joke, but it's not. But Game Bears went out there. We know about that fight. Jay Paul can still fight some of these MMA guys. He can still fight some of these older boxers. He can still fight some of these boxers' sons or younger brothers on the come up. He can still do that if he loses. And guess what? The, we just mentioned before we got into this, the boxing, uh, uh, the WBC or the WBO, I think it was the WBC, WBC I think. Yeah. They said, with what he's doing, we're actually considering raking him if he comes out with a win. Yeah. You can always win somebody over if you show them that you're legit and taking it seriously. While he's spat in the face of people and gone the untraditional route, if he shows I could hold my merit against these guys. Maybe I don't beat you, Tommy Fury, but if I hold my merit against you and I show that I'm worth my, my medal here, he'll start to gain that respect because nothing competitors love than if you go out there and you back up your words. Yes. Win, lose, or draw. And you know this, Griff, from being a former football player. I may talk a lot of trash as a defensive lineman, but if we go out there and even though your team won and maybe you beat me more than I beat you, but if I hold my own against you on some plays and I'll show you that, okay, I'm a big talker, but I can I could back some of it up. I, I some of It was just your better day. There's a mutual respect that we see at the end of every sports movie, yes. sports film, and in real life. And that's what I'm saying with Jake Paul. If he was to lose in a nice showing, showing that his cardio's gotten better, his technique's gotten better, but he just came up a little bit short. Maybe it was a knockdown in the third round and he just didn't overcome it because of that point deduction or whatever. I think he walks away a bigger winner than a loser. Now, if he gets starched, different story. But if Tommy Fury loses in any fashion, Close decision, barely beats him, knockout, TKO, a cut. I'm telling you this right now, we'll never hear about Tommy Fury. The only time we hear about Tommy Fury, hey, Tyson's in the ring. Hey, isn't it his brother right there that used to fight? We'll never hear about it again. Man, this, honestly, I don't even know if Tommy Fury, we're going to hear about him no matter what happens in this fight. Are you? Do you predict down the road that sometime we're going to be talking here on the show about how, oh, Tommy Fury is going for his third fourth fifth title defense he's 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 getting into the legacy of his brother he's he's competing at, no. no tommy no. fury did anybody know about T tyson fury's brother before jake paul wanted to fight him 
No. All right. This is this guy, and that's right there is the biggest reason why Jake Paul has so much to lose in this fight. Because this guy is if he's it depends on what Paul's goals are. We don't know if he wants to go into MMA or if he wants to stick with boxing. It's almost like he's just he's it's his boxing career, his fighting career is just his business. That's what it's doing. He he's not cornering himself off. He is giving himself options. I can go the MMA route. I can go the boxing route. I can keep making my YouTube videos. Which is why we will still hear from me even if he loses. What I'm saying is Jake Paul, I'm not talking about making a, making your bread, making your money. No, Jake Paul's set for that. And that's another thing. This man, like you said, he didn't go the traditional route. Mm -hmm. This guy, most boxers are flat broke, trying whatever they can to get into a gym, get training, get fights. That mm -hmm. way they can build their name, take the hard road. Jake Paul, he's not taking that. He is a guy who came into the sport, started boxing with millions. He started his boxing career with a celebrity boxing fight against a basketball player. Mm, All right. You know, that's, that's why the, the respect there from the boxing world, why there's a lack of it. I understand because they can't respect a guy who started, started his career up, but he's not going through the same hardships as all these other real legitimate dedicated to the sport since they were seven, eight years old boxers. No, of, of course, but then at the same time, as I said, if you prove your worth once you get there, there's some guys who make the NFL. At one point, Kurt Warren was bagging groceries, mm. went to the Arena League, then he gets to the NFL and proved his worth. There's some guys who in the NBA came from junior college. They didn't go to a big D1 program. Some guys had to travel to seven different countries playing overseas before they got their call to the NBA. Some guys in minor leagues for years and years and years finally get to the major leagues, get out there to the plate or in the field, prove what they can do. Yeah, it is what it is. Randy Couture was 33 years old when he started his MMA career. Natural. Okay, that's exactly it. Sometimes you're going to have an outlier who goes the untraditional route. But if you prove yourself and you're able to go in there and hang with some guys, that's been the biggest thing for a lot of these boxers. Not that you're just going the untraditional route, but you're look who you're fighting. Now that you're starting to fight legit guys, if you're going to fight a former MMA, MMA fighter, don't fight a guy who's a wrestler. Don't fight a jiu-jitsu guy. Fight a stand-up guy. One of, one of the draws for Conor McGregor versus Mayweather, Mayweather said he's a stand-up guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, he can do other stuff, but most of his game is standing up. Nate Diaz, big allure to it is he does train in boxing. He's, he does great on the ground as well, but he trains in boxing. But if we had someone like Ryan Clark, who, what, 8-0 with ace submissions, that's not a guy you want to see in the cage. I mean, it's going to be in the boxing ring. Right. How being a Margaret Madoff? You don't want to see him necessarily in a boxing match no, because guess what? Not. You're a wrestler. Now, granted, with the way he trains and everything, he might be decent in it. I don't know. But you see what I'm saying? So with someone like Paul, oh, he fought a stand-up guy named Anderson Silva. Respect, respect. You're fighting Tommy Fury, a legit boxer. Now, who's to say he doesn't fight Nate Diaz? They might do a one-and-one -one in this and that. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. let's wrap this up because yeah. we got some other stuff to get to. Absolutely. Paul Fury. Who do you got? Uh, I'm gonna take Paul. How many rounds are they going? Eight. Eight. I'm gonna take Paul. Six round knockout. I'm taking Jay Paul by decision here. It's a cruiserweight battle. I'm taking Jay Paul by decision. The reason I wanted to cut that short, and I it, it was a clunky way in how we ended it. Okay, right. but the reason I wanted to is because oh, we got some good stuff here. First There's off, news. talking about one and one, Francis Ngannou, Deontay Wilder. Wilder saying he'll do a one and one. Mm. He'll do one MMA bout, one uh, boxing match. That's something Tyson Fury was talking about with him, but Wilder, Nagano, oh. Ooh. But Griff, if we stayed in a square circle, the, one of the fights we've been waiting for all year, yep. it's been signed by the fighters. Done. Little details need to be ironed out by the networks. April 15th, Ryan Garcia, Javante Tank, Davis, it's going to happen. Oh, baby, Davis Garcia, initial thoughts on one of the most anticipated box matches for a long time. Davis Garcia, Griff. Oh, good job. Good job, boxing. You did something right. Good Lord, it took you so long to do it, but you finally did it right. Long time. These two had to meet. We, the people who actually love boxing and respect the history of it and how it's developed. And even though some would argue it's fallen off a little bit, they still have that fire passion for it. They will tell you this sport needed uh, a McGregor versus Diaz type fight. These, this, this sport needed a John Jones versus Serial Gone for the heavyweight title type of fight. Yeah. They needed something where people are going to not just say, oh, oh, that fight happened? Oh, who won? Oh, I didn't catch it. I was sleeping. Oh, I, I was with the missus. 
nah, you're going to plan for this. You try to miss it and you go to sleep your damn self. You go to sleep. There's there's things we got to watch. There's things to do. People are going to want to watch this fight. Eyeballs are going to be all on this fight. And it's going to help boxing. And maybe, maybe the best thing that could happen, no matter win, lose for either guy, best thing that could happen for this sport with this fight is that the boxing world notices, oh, look what happened when we actually put two of our biggest names and got them into the ring. And it was actually not like three years to do. We did it pretty quick. Look what happened. Oh, we're getting a bump. Oh, the social media is up. Oh, we're getting the money's flowing in. Let them maybe down. Then after this, we continue that. We continue to make the names, put the names together, help our, help our rising stars get their names up. That way you have more stars. You have more people. People want to watch fight. All right. This fight is going to be beautiful. Uh, and after watching Tank's last fight, ooh, I'm hoping. Any of his fights, really. Any of his fights, but I'm fights, with you. But specifically in his last fight, I I kind of want to see Tank do what he's going to do against Ryan Garcia. Garcia is a, one of the best, again, one of the best names in boxing, but Tank Davis is a different beast. It is going to be phenomenal to see the clash of these two styles, the power and knockout skills of Javante Davis, mm -hmm. the speed and technician of Ryan Garcia, two young in their prime Brahma Bulls meeting up in the square circle, going at it. Now, yes, I don't think boxing is going to learn their lesson. They are some greedy pigs. That's they are not going to learn their lesson. Floyd Mayweather, in a sense, gave you the blueprint that if you put on the big fights, they'll do it. Wilder and Fury went at it seven different times almost. Mm -hmm. And that was in a timely manner. And yet boxing still, we still cannot get Spence Crawford. We still can't get it. We're still waiting for it to be technically, officially, Davis Garcia. Because again, a little iron details out by the network. Who's going to sign what? But... The fact that both fighters have signed, their own promoters are saying, let's do 